So we have to go back and say, God, speak to us, correct us, guide us. <clears throat> our duty to love our fellow man. You know, in this day and age where we have racism, we have tension, strife, what are we doing? Are we contributing or are we showing the light, the love of Christ? So that, those are talents that God has given us and he's, he's gonna bring forth an, an account. He says that you had opportunity to love on your neighbor, what did you do? So we can't just say, oh no, 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 just my, my couple things that I'm talented in, my, the physical, just the keyboard, the piano. It's going through all those manifest of talents. Right. Our time. How? This is something as teachers, we, we constantly go back to the principal and say, we need more time in the classroom. We need time with the children. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, if we are looking at that format, are we tithing our time? There's 24 hours in a day. And if you tithe the time, that's two hours and 40 minutes. Are you giving that time to God in prayer? Praying with your spouse, praying with your children. Are you taking time to intercede for the neighbor that you know has cancer? Are you taking time to pray and say, God, show, show me what I need for this season, instead of depending on the seasons prior? So you constantly have to give your time to God. Those are, God is going to give an account to your time. What did you do with your time? That's right. Our minds. Some of us have brilliant minds that we can create softwares, create things. And are we doing that for the glory of God? Are we, are we just wasting it away? We're watching the, the next Netflix series? Or are we actually saying, God, use my, use my mind to bridge communities, bridge world links, missionaries. Are we do, what are we doing for the glory of God with our, with our minds? Some of us are going to college, becoming doctors and, and this and that, and we're not, we're not progressing the church. So God is going to give an account to the mind that he, that he has given you. Right. In our jobs, as an employee, you are, have been entrusted with this position. That is the talent that God has given you. Amen. So when God is giving you and, and he's coming to talk to you personally, he's going to say, what did you do with that position? Did you, did you mouth off at the boss? Did you come in late to work? Did you leave early and just say a sign out that you left the same time? So our integrity, that at the job, what are we doing? Those are talents. God is coming back and he wants to address all forms of talents. And I think today, um, and if you're a boss, are you taking, are you taking care of your staff? Are you, are you providing guidance? Are you providing the love of Christ through your business? Amen. So those are things that God is going to come back and he's going to look at us and say, okay, what did you do with my time? What did you do with your position? Amen. If we look at the word of God, you see that there is a measurement. God measured everyone that he interacted with. Many of us know that God, in the Word of God, it says that there's, there's a record keeping of our thoughts, our intents, the things that came out of our mouth, the things that didn't come out of our mouth. Okay. All that is being, rec is being record kept by our, the heavenly places. Okay. So there is a measurement in the Bible. If you read in Matthew 25, God has a set of expectations. It says here that he is coming to give in the record, keep, keeping the record, give an account. Yep. He, wants to, he wants to bring the, the, the servants and say, okay, what did you do with the five? What did you do with the two? What did you do with the one? So God has expectations. These expectations are very clear. We learn that he's going to inspect what he expects. It is like if we tell our child, Jimmy, I expect that you, your room is cleaned every day. And we as parents never go check it. Is the room gonna be clean? No, the room will not be clean. So sometimes we as children of God, we need a reaffirmation that God is coming back and checking on our work. 
So we have to go back and say, God, look at, look at me. Look at what I'm, everything I'm accountable for. And the question that I, when I, when I read the Bible, I always look at it for myself. What is God speaking to me? So I said, Sessa, tell me, what did you do with what I left you? What did you do with the children that I entrusted you at school? Did you invest the time with them? What are you doing with your relationship? Are you keeping that in the integrity? Amen. What did you do with your job? Matthew 25, 19, Jesus says that he is settling accounts with them. So in our minds and the time that I have with you today, I want you to take time to look at the things that God has entrusted you with. Some things can be evident. Is it your children? Is it the job? Is it the house that he's given you that he's blessed you with? What are you doing with that? And then the next thing, how did God measure our talents? Well, in the word of God, it says, a key, a key phrase, a key, a key passage that we can look at how God measured it. He says, it says here that in verse 21, his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. So the key to this is being faithful. Yep. Amen. Yep. Being Amen. faithful. Yep. That is the measurement. Amen. If you want to look at how God is going to look at your talents or the talents, because not everyone has, everyone will have a lot. It's how are you being faithful to that? Yep. Are you being faithful with your time? Are you being faithful with your family? Are you being faithful with your job? Are you being faithful with your church home? Amen. And this is the one I wanted to just kind of, now you can unze take your seatbelt off and we're cruising now. <laughs> being faithful with your church home Amen. doesn't mean just making the, the attendance roll roster. Oh, Present. Amen. Present. Amen. Present. Amen. God is making sure that we are involved in our church home, Amen. that we are using our talents to take the next generation closer to God, yes. getting yes. them ready for the kingdom yes. of God, yes. who is returning yes. soon. Yes. Amen. Yes. This means that we're not just showing up. Pastor said, I needed everyone to come in at five o'clock and here we all are. What are we doing? Are we just walking from room to room and inspecting? Are we saying, Pastor Bob, what, are, what can I help you? How can I help you? Where, where, where do you need me? All right. Amen. Because it's one of those things that we, and remember the prophetic, I, I, I'm not pointing at you. I have three <laughs> pointing back to me. <laughs> so so just, to, just to clarify, I'm not, I'm not singling you out. But we have to be responsible with our our involvement here at our church home. Amen. Amen. We have to remember that there is a responsibility when King Jesus is in front of you and says, you were there how many? You, how long have you been in this church? And what have you done to show? You've been here five months. You've been here five years, ten years. What are you doing? What are you doing with the church? So this is something that I, I, I want us to look at and analyze, we should as individuals, if we all have talents, yeah. we should all be participating in our church home. Amen. Some of us are, it's okay if, this is, if you're just learning the walk of Christ and you're just know, getting to know him, but if you're an active member, there's a, there's a saying that if you keep saying, I'm just visiting the church, I'm just visiting the church, and you never have taken time to sit with a pastor and say, how can I get involved? How, where can you use my talents for the kingdom of God? Then that is your responsibility. That is where God is going to, the Holy Spirit will be speaking to you Amen. directly. Amen. So those are the things that I, I, when I read this text, and I was just praying and saying, God, give me fresh word for fountain of life. Amen. What do we need from the individuals that are here? Amen. 
are, that are going to be here and the, the ones that will be coming is that we cannot give excuse. Excuses, if you look at what the third person was saying, verse 25, so I was afraid and went off and hid your talent. Uh, I, I know I can sing, but I just, I'm afraid of people. I'm afraid of people. I, I know I can play the guitar. I just don't, I don't feel comfortable. What was, what was the, the response that Jesus, or the master gave? Verse 26. But his master replied to him, you evil, lazy servant. Well, going back to my English field, I went to Webster and looked up the lazy. Okay? Lazy can be defined as someone who is disinclined to activity or exertion. Not energetic. Number two says, encouraging inactivity. I want to stop right here. Wow. Encouraging inactivity. So these are the people who go from room to room and say, oh, that looks difficult. <laughs> it goes, oh, I, I don't know how we're going to do this. God has really entrusted you. And those are the things that, you know, <laughs> encouraging inactivity. So you should be emanating a positive radiance from the Holy Spirit, saying, this person is so on fire that if I go near him, I get creativity coming from my mind. I'm getting now a revival in my spirit that I want to use my talent. But if we're just going and we're just feeding off the people, our negative, inactive selves, and we're just saying, God, I'm here, I'm here, but you're not doing anything, then you're what Jesus said, you evil, lazy servant. Yep. For the number three said, moving slowly. Okay? So moving slowly to this definition means I have the idea and it's just there. I have an idea. I, I have an idea to make this church to the, go to the next level, but I'm just going to sit here. Moving slowly. Jesus goes back and says, you evil, lazy servant. And then number four said, unwilling to work or use energy. Sometimes, and let's be real, sometimes we come in and we say, did they have cake today? <laughs> if they have cake today, I'll stay and I'll, 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 I'll move some plates around to make them see that I'm working. <laughs> so going back and, and using the, you know, being humorous, but going back and in the severity of it, we have to be real with ourselves right. and say, Holy Spirit, I don't want to be called lazy. I don't want, when I come in front of you, when I'm in front of the King of Kings, I do not want to be called lazy yeah. and saying that I didn't use my talents to grow. And that goes with many realms. It goes with the church home as well as your physical home. What are you doing with your talent? Everyone has a talent, regardless of if you are a well-educated person or a person who barely uh, left elementary school. You have a talent. You have to start asking the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Amen. What is that talent? Now, there's a question, how do I know what is my talent? Well, it's that urge, that, the drive that you have in your mind. That's right. If you love music, then that is uh, your natural talent. That is where God is birthed in you. If you love to work with hands and work to build things, then you're, that is your talent. Right. So making sure that you're using that for the kingdom of God. Right. So my question for us today is, how did the one with five talents get five? The answer is one at a time. <laughs>